We can also talk about regulating gene expression at the level of translation. So when we're talking about translational control, we're talking about the degree to which mRNA is being turned into or translated into a protein product. And so there are certain features present on the mRNA, and these will affect whether or not translation will occur, and if it does, how long that mRNA remains active. So I just briefly mentioned in the last lecture, uh, there are some things that can affect the mRNA stability. Well, two of these things are presence of a 5' prime cap and length of the poly A tail on the 3' prime end. Both of these additions happen to this mRNA before it leaves the nucleus in a eukaryotic cell. So the 5' prime cap uh, helps with export. It also helps the ribosome determine which it, end it should start on. The poly A tail also helps with export, helps to protect the end of it as well, and so it also helps to protect for this mRNA stability. Another relatively new area of study are microRNAs, or miRNAs. They also can regulate translation, and what they're going to do is cause destruction of mRNAs before they can even be translated. So let's talk a little bit more about them. Um, these microRNAs, siRNAs, there's a bunch of different names for them, but basically they're small RNAs that are complementary to normal mRNA, and this will cause this region to be double-stranded. So normally, the only time you're ever going to see this double-stranded RNA is if there's a problem, like some rare viruses can have this double-stranded RNA as their genetic material. The body responds to these areas of double-stranded RNA as if it was something bad and something to get rid of, and that targeted mRNA gets destroyed. And it was originally thought that this was just a cell protection mechanism, but now that people are studying this more and more, it's realized that this is also a mechanism for the cells to regulate their gene expression at the level of this mRNA. It was originally discovered as a mistake. They were doing experiments. Um, in this particular experiment, they added the positive stranded RNA and as a control. They also added the negative stranded RNA. And so in this case, they uh, were complementary to one another and they had double stranded RNA. In those samples, the genes were completely turned off. So they thought they would get more expression of their particular gene if they added more RNA for that gene, not nothing. So they were very surprised about this, but they um, continued to study this. They looked at it in all sorts of different organisms, people all around the world, uh, everything from yeast to plants to animals, and we call this process RNA interference. And again, it's relatively recent discovery. Many of these discoveries happened in the late 90s, early 2000s. Uh, and discovery of this process won the Nobel Prize in 2006. So what happens in a cell is um, th several different things. So in this case, this is a virus that might be making this double-stranded RNA. In this case, this would be uh, a gene within the cell that happens to form this stem loop structure. So it's just a short double-stranded region. What happens in both of these cells, so this is double-stranded, this is double-stranded, both of them are going to go to a protein called dicer. Dicer does just what its name suggests. It will dice and chew up or cleave these into um, shorter regions of, of this. So usually they're about 20 to 22 nucleotides or so long. Once these have become activated, this then can go, depending on the origin of it, if it was uh, within the cell itself or was, whether it was a viral material, uh, can go off to various complexes can go off to the risk complex. This is going to cause degradation of that particular mRNA, going to overall inhibit translation as well. And if um, it was the miRNA coming from the cell itself, you can get things like chromatin remodeling, transcription silencing, and so on. This process is very widely used now in molecular biology to specifically target or silence genes that you want to study. All you have to do is introduce double-stranded RNA for that particular gene, and the cell will turn off not only that gene that you um, introduced, but all the other copies of that gene within the cell. And so now they've been looking at to possibly using this RNA interference as a pharmaceutical agent. If you can turn off every single copy of a particular gene in a cell, that might be a quite powerful tool. And they've actually used animal models now to show the successful RNAi treatment, things like virus infection, several eye diseases, cancers potentially, uh, inflammatory bowel disease, and it's just a really powerful technique and they are hoping to make these first drugs available within the next decade.
some of the things that they're probably working on right now is getting it in physically into the cells. Because when I was in the lab, one of the things that was most difficult was physically getting that RNA into the cells. So whether you introduce it by a virus, that virus might cause some side effects itself, right, from that particular virus infection. Um, or whether you just directly inject it into the cells, how are you going to get it there? Um, these are sorts of things that they're working on probably right now.